Hi everybody, this is Denise with PurplePaperParadise.com and I'm here with my Make the Cut video for September. Um, I actually was going to do a Make the Cut video a few days ago, but then Andy surprised us with a new beta version. So I decided to go ahead and do a little um, tutorial on 4.02 as it stands right now. It's still beta, but I want to show you some of the really cool features that Andy added to it and especially how those apply to the e-craft. So first off, we're going to talk about the mats. Now you may notice that the mat here is a little bit different looking. Um, Andy made it so that we can actually add a custom mat size. And uh, this is an excellent thing for Make the Cut, especially because we can cut up to any length. So now you would be able to make a 12 by 36 inch mat uh, without a problem here in Make the Cut. But another thing that's kind of cool about it is that when you cl click on Create Custom Mat Size, is that we can now specify what we want our margins to be. And what's cool about this is that because the eCraft needs about uh, one inch to one and a half inch margin so that the rollers can hold on to the material, is that we can now set this up on our mat so that when we're laying things out and everything, we, uh, we don't have to pay as close of attention to those margins to make sure that we're going to have enough room. Now, I was playing around with this a little bit earlier and these margins, the left top, right and bottom, apply to when you have the mat in this landscape format and that's where if you notice the arrow over here is being fed into the machine. So technically um, what we want to see is we want to see our one and a half inch margin on this side of our mat. So that would actually be our left margin. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in at 1.5 and then I'm going to leave the right which is actually over here and that would be the very first point where it's cutting once we change our uh, orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take that down because we can go right up to the edge there and I'm going to just change these for right now to um, quarter of an inch on the top and bottom which are actually going to be our sides once we change our orientation. And we're going to hit save here and now you'll see that there is this margin is now slashed out so when we go to uh, our portrait landscape or our portrait orientation you can see now that that one and a half inch margin is at the very back of the paper and this would be the section of your paper that you want the rollers to grip onto. Now a um, couple of other things that we could very easily do with this is we could set up a mat for 8.5 by 11 paper. Um, lot, lots of things that I think this will really work out extremely well for eCraft users. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you something else that's very cool here about what Andy has done. I'm going to bring a couple of um, shapes onto the mat here um, so that we can kind of play around with some things. But he actually brought in some note editing. And I'm going to show you real quick how to kind of how to do this. Um, it seems pretty easy, but if you look over here in the corner where your uh, measurements are, there's a little icon here. And when we click on that, we get a whole new toolbar. So the very first thing here is to edit paths at the node le level. I'm actually going to skip that for right now. We'll come back to that. But he added a new basic shape menu here where you can see that it, it actually, I kind of like this system a little bit better. But you can go here and then you'll see that your cursor changes to your basic shape size. And you can click and drag and that will put that mat on uh, that shape on your mat for you. Now we also have a draw free line, free hand lines, just like that. So that'll create what's called an open path for you. Um, we also have bezier curves. 
So you can see how, um, if you want to create a closed path, how that works there. Um, this eraser tool is actually quite interesting. Um, and, I'll, yeah, and all of this editing node stuff, I'll probably do a more detailed tutorial on this once the um, final version of this is released. But you'll see here I've got the eraser tool. And if I go ahead and start to erase here, and then once I click off, so you click and you, you color, color in the area, you'll see that it takes out that part that you want to cut off. So if I do like that, you can see that it leaves that middle section. Now, if I click on inverse, what actually happens is I'm going to be adding to it. So there you go. You see that I actually added onto my shape instead of erasing it. So this tool, I think, would be very cool, especially if you have a shape that you've brought in from, say, like a pixel trace and two lines aren't quite meeting up right you could use this eraser tool to kind of fill in the gap um, or do a very quick uh, slice but there's another way to do that here too here is a slice option where if you click drag release you can see now that you actually have two separate shapes and they're actually open paths they're not closed at all but you've just now managed to slice that object in half uh, very easily. And then there's this, uh, which is a measurement tool. So you can see I can hold it here and it'll show me the full measurements, um, how many nodes, the width, the height, all that kind of stuff. And this measurement tool does allow you to measure in centimeters and millimeters for um, people that are outside the United States. So now we come back up to this very top one, which is the edit paths at no level. And you can see here we get a whole different cursor. And when I hold my cursor over one of the lines here, this is a section of this path. It then, and I click on it, I can then see the two nodes. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Oh, and that's another thing that Andy did is that he improved on the zooming so that we don't have that rendering the mat all the time. And you can see now that I've got this section selected with these two nodes at the end. And if I click on that section, I can actually move it out or I can move it in. And I can do some other really neat things with this. So like I select here and you can see I get the corner handles. So now I can rearrange how I want that curve to look. Um, this actually, I have been playing around with it a little bit, and it's very easy. I think um, this is going to be something that um, rivals Inkscape as far as node editing goes. Um, it's very intuitive. It's very user-friendly. Um, I've been playing around with this a lot. And uh, I've really been enjoying it so far. Um, now, one thing I have to tell you is that this is the beta version. And Andy has said that if you do a project in the 4.0 series betas, that the file extensions may not work in a future um, stable version of 4.0. So right now I haven't done very much cutting. Um from this version and he has not to my knowledge updated the uh, eCraft plugin which of course I know we all are all, we're really waiting for that um, I really want to see that so but a lot of very interesting things here happening in make the cut and I think um, especially once we get the eCraft uh, plugin stable and it's cutting consistently well from both tray and front mode I think this is going to be an excellent um, program for us eCrafters, uh, especially with these mat sizes. I really like being able to have this margin here because then I know exactly where, how close I can get my um, shapes to, and uh, it really does help quite a bit. So that's a good first look at uh, beta version 4.02, and. I will definitely be doing some more videos on especially all the note editing. I'm still kind of playing around with it a lot. 
Um, so I'm going to see if I can find a couple of things that I can um, experiment with and see if I can get them to work right. But so far I'm really impressed with what I see here. So um, this is a great addition to the Make the Cut software. Um, and I think that's going to be it on this video, but we there are some other very neat things that are in uh, uh, version 4. But again, like I said, I'm going to wait till the stable version of it comes out to do a more advanced and in-depth tutorial on all the node editing. So, thanks for watching. This is Denise from Purple Paper Paradise, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye now.